Central Asia, one of the most beautiful and unique regions on Earth. With a rich history at the heart of the Silk Road, incredible natural landscapes, and remnants of the great empires that have passed through its borders. But what mark has all of this left on the food? In our opinion, one of the tastiest, heartiest and most varied on the planet. We're in Bishkek and we're on our way to a chai khana or traditional tea house to try some of the most beautiful dishes. Let's do it. Right, so we've ordered five, possibly six dishes because <laughs> the waitress recommended us something that we couldn't say no to. So it's on the way now. Can't wait, I'm so excited. Delicious. Let's get some apples in there. <laughs> <laughs> Loves an apple. Loves an apple, that girl. Right, so we ordered bread to go with the food, and the waitress recommended us this, which is a national Kyrgyz dish called borsok, and it's basically like a little donut, and she put a sauce for us to dip in as well. Let's give it a go. Cheers. It's like a little cloud of joy. It's a, like a non-sweet donut, basically. Really good. And the sauce is a really thick, creamy, slightly garlicky sauce. Amazing. Perfect starter. The food's arrived. Right, let's dig into the Besh Parmak. Which is actually the national dish here in Kyrgyzstan. So the noodles are really nice. It's really lightly spiced, it's not a strong tasting dish at all. It's usually served with horse meat, but we ordered it with beef. And um, yeah, it's really good. It's almost like a soup in the bottom as well, I didn't expect that. It just gives it, just like a, a meaty broth. Ramen. Like a ramen, basically. Central it's a Asian ramen. ramen. It's good, really good. These are manti, which are Central Asian dumplings. We ordered them fried and steamed. These are the fried manti. They're filled with lamb meat, spices, a meaty broth. These ones also have potato and onion, and they're wrapped in a beautifully crunchy pastry. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mm. It's full of onion. We also ordered the more traditional steamed manti. These were filled with an amazing spiced pumpkin, potato, and onion puree. The soft, tender pastry just melts in your mouth, and the pumpkin puree gives the manti a slightly sweet but beautiful kick. Incredible. This soup is called surpo. It's meat broth with large chunks of potatoes, carrots, and meat, topped with fresh parsley. Despite having a few ingredients, this soup would keep you going a long way as it's very meaty and wholesome. This is lagman. This one is fried. You can have it with broth as well, like or a soup or ramen. And there are noodles, spiced to beautiful noodles, packed with vegetables. It's, almost, it's like a wok, basically. And oh, let's try it. It's, this one's actually a bit spicy. It's packed full of vegetables. You've got onion, lots of different peppers, even cabbage in this one. It's so fragrant and incredibly rich because of the meat. We could order it with chicken or, I think, lamb. We ordered it with beef. And it's just so comforting and feeling and just satisfying. Perfect autumn dish. Lagman's the perfect dish any time of the year, oh, yeah, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> who am I kidding? Okay, so we also ordered a salad called shakara, 
basically for a bit of colour and a little bit of a balance because we're really meat based here so we needed some veg and some salad to balance it out. Okay, so that's the tasters done. We've got a big challenge ahead of us. So let's get on with it. <laughs> I reckon we can do it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we're strong. Huh. Well, that was hard work. Feel like I need a nap right now. <laughs> well, I've actually been beaten, so we've taken some with us. So the thing is with Central Asian food, and that meal was a great example of it, is it's so varied, like as varied as Central Asia itself. You've got influence from Chinese food, influence from more Middle Eastern cuisines. The Besh Barmak and the Shurpo was like the food of the steppes, whereas the Lagman was a lot more East Asian almost tasting. It is so varied, and the history of the Silk Road has a lot to do with that. Speaking of the Silk Road, in Hiva, Uzbekistan, we tried Shivit Oshi, which are noodles made with dill and served with meat, potatoes and meaty sauce on top. They are very fresh and have a light taste. Also, we tried these local dumplings that are stuffed with egg. Very unusual, but incredibly tasty. And this is Chiburiek which is a deep-fried dough with meat and onion inside. It is the go-to street food snack across Central Asia. To be honest, my food of choice was lagman, all the time. Thick noodles with meat, onion, carrots and peppers in a beautifully spiced broth. It is very fragrant and meaty, hearty and incredibly satisfying. Plov is a way of life in Central Asia. In Tashkent, Uzbekistan, we got the chance to see how this beauty was made from scratch, which was a mesmerizing process. Afterwards, we tried three different types of plov. We have a full video about it on our channel, which we'll link down below, so make sure you check it out. Another popular street snack in Central Asia is samsa, similar to the Indian samosa. It is made in tando oven, and we tried it in the city of Osh, in Kyrgyzstan. The link of the full Osh video is below. This is Ashlan Fu, a fragrant spicy noodle soup which is actually eaten cold. It's the local dish of Karakul in eastern Kyrgyzstan and it's the national dish of the Dungan people, a Chinese diaspora who fled here from King China. This was arguably the most East Asian dish we tried in Central Asia. The vinegar-based broth mixed with the chilli paste, fresh spring onion, starch and wheat noodles was an unbelievable combination, one of our favourites. Goshnan with meat inside, narin, kurdak, homemade style kurdak, and soup that's called tuchvara. <sighs> so we've been working all day and we are so hungry now. It is two o'clock, we haven't had breakfast, we were like, we're going to order later, so we'll just wait. And wait two o'clock. <laughs> Far too long. So. <clears throat> Let's start with the soup that's called Tuchvara and it looks incredibly delicious. Mm. Uh, let's try it. And it is incredibly delicious. <laughs> it's really um, fragrant, it's tomatoey, you can taste coriander there, garlic, onion. Mm. It's really delicious. Now I want to try some dumplings. So Tuchvara is a dumpling soup. Mm -hmm. It's full of little dumplings in here. Mm. Good. Mm -hmm. Meat inside? Mm -hmm. mm. It's full of fresh herbs as well. Incredibly comforting. Like all the food seems to be so filling, wholesome, and really, really comforting. Mm. I'll try a bit more of that broth. Yeah. That is so nice. It's ever so slightly spicy as well. Just a little bit. Just a little, little bit. And like you say, the freshness of the herbs come through, the tomatoiness, the meaty dumplings. Oh, that is. That's awesome. I think, to be honest, that might be one of my favourite dishes we tried. I agree. 
It's really good. I really like that one. Right, where are we moving next? Do you want to go for Narin? Let's go for Narin. So Narin is similar to Beshbar Mak that we tried the other day and it's a noodle dish traditionally with horse meat, which is popular throughout Central Asia. And here we've got some onions and some dill with it as well. And yeah, we've got beef here. However, we have traditional, <clears throat> I think it's called kazi, which is a horse sausage. Yeah. Here as well. And this broth yeah. came alongside the narin, so you're supposed to have them together. So let's try and get them both in at once. Oh my god, pressure. Oh. You would normally just mix it. We don't have the balls that would fit it. To be honest, I actually prefer that to Besh Mark, if I'm honest. That's a lot more subtle. <laughs> you tried it already, yeah. That's a lot more subtle tasting, and the noodles themselves are a lot. They like fall apart, different. don't they? They're, they're a different texture. And mm. yeah, Besh Mark is a lot meatier, a lot heavier, and this feels a lot more comforting, softer. Which is really strange nice. because you think like it looks like there is a lot more meat here. Yeah, yeah, Maybe yeah. Maybe because of the way it's sort of served, because in Besh Mark you have like big bigger chunks pieces yeah, yeah. of meat. Maybe that's why. Right, so let's try the kazi. Oh, and a bit of noodle. Bonus. Mm-hmm. It is nice. Is it a distinctive, like, different flavour to any other meat, or does it taste similar to something? It's not very strong tasting, to be mm. honest, at all. You've got the layer of fat in here as well that gives it two different textures. It's not actually a particularly chewy meat, it's quite soft, it falls apart in your mouth. If it's similar to anything, I would say it's similar to beef, similar tasting to beef. But yeah, it's nice. Happy we tried it. Let's try the cold duck. Ladies first. Of course. So here we have, this is essentially like a um, homemade simple dish. Fried potatoes with some meat and plenty of onion. Onion. Plenty of onion. Okay, I'm just going to... Okay, I'll go home. I mean, now you do a fried potato. <laughs> <laughs> Is it really heavily spiced or...? Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. Quite, so just quite a plain, simple dish. Uh -huh. It is what it is. There is nothing really much you can add. It's just a fried potato with some meat and onion. It is simple. It is delicious. It's not strongly flavored or any like spices or herbs added to it. It's pretty and it's simple. I think these two dishes in particular are a lot more reflective of nomadic people. I yeah. think there's some of the dishes we tried yesterday, like lagman and stuff, there's a lot of spices and herbs and vegetables involved as well. Whereas these are simple, there's a few ingredients put together really well. And I think, yeah, that reflects the, the nomadic people that can't bring a lot of things along with them when they're, when they're traveling across the steppe, etc. So, like us. Like us. Maybe we should carry some Besh Mak with us. Right, and last but not least, this is Gosh Non, which is a meat and onion naan. Naan, you might recognize the name, similar to Indian naan. Again, there's a lot of similarities of food and history that was passed across the Silk Road. And here in Central Asia, they eat a lot of bread cooked in tandoor ovens and also non like this, which is fried, isn't it? Yeah. So let's dig in. I think this is going to be similar to a chibarek, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. It's like a really good quality chibarek. Really good. <laughs> perfect. I think that, to be honest, would be perfect. Oh, yeah. And dipped in the chuchvara broth. Okay, that's the tasting done. What are we going to attack first? Mm. See? Yeah. I'm Let's down. I'm soup. down. And we go to dessert. This is chuk chuk. And essentially, it's a tartar dessert, but it's eaten all over Central Asia. And this is a deep fried dough and then it's coated in syrup. And here we have some raisins with it as well. And it is quite popular throughout Russia as well. So I'm really familiar with this sweet treat. And uh, 
Oh yeah, I wanted to say that baklava is really popular here as well. They just didn't have it in this. We did place. order baklava, yeah. yeah. They cancelled it. So yeah. Chak Chak was found, as Julia said, in Tatarstan, which is a Muslim region of Russia, but it's also really popular in Central Asia, and they have their own varieties in different places. I think there's a Bukhara version of Chak Chak, a Tajik version of Chak Chak. So yeah, again, it's all been passed throughout the region. And we couldn't resist having a, having a dessert of some sort. No, showing it to you more than anything. Oh, there are some walnuts as well. Nice. Oh. It's easier to eat it with your hands, I bet, than this. <laughs> it does not going well. Hmm. The basing looks go really well there. Mm. It's really crunchy. It's very sweet. It's like a deep fried biscuit, which are almost coated in syrup. Yeah, and because of the syrup, it's very soft on the outside, but then the inside of the biscuit itself is still crunchy, so there's like a real mm. difference of textures as well. It's, yeah, it's really not nice. like salt completely, that it's all like smooshy ma mass. No, it's, um, just a little bit of syrup yeah, on around the outside. So it's kind yeah. of together. My family used to make chuck chuck very often. Really? Because it's easy to make it. Mm -hmm. And it's really sweet. And a lot of sweet. Especially your grand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. With tea all the time, yeah? Mm -hmm. Chuck, chuck and tea. And on that mouth-watering note, that's the end of our food video here in Central Asia. Which one of these foods was your favorite? Let us know down below. And thanks for watching. See you in the next one. We're in Chakranamabad, we just sat down, and the waitress brought us some national drinks to try. Yeah, it's um, very sour. Yeah, it's very unusual. That's exactly the same one as we tried in the dish cake video. I forgot what it's called. I'll write it down. <laughs>